Welcome back, my fellow makers and foam fanatics. In today's episode, we're going to be making a Cyberpunk 2077 uh, combat helmet. In the game, you run around and get weapons and collect things. And I found these helmets and a particular helmet uh, style I really liked. I thought, this is kind of cool, the way it was designed, streamlined. So we're going to be making that today. Uh, go to my store, download the pattern, and you can make it with me. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. We're going to start with our 10 millimeter foam and we went ahead and pre-cut our pieces. This is part one. Uh, cut them out at 90 degree angles and on the front you can see right here it's a bevel. Nice clean bevel cut on both pieces right and left. Part two same thing at 90 degree angles with 10 millimeter foam. Part three right and left with 10 millimeter foam. Uh, on the piece right here this needs to be beveled as well as you can see right here. Sharp bevel. These are all cut out. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of the parts. Now this is uh, the rest of the smaller, this is part five, part six, and part seven. So we're gonna cut these pieces into bevels. So what I like to do is I like to separate them. So let's go ahead and take, cut these guys apart. Now I separate these because it's a lot easier to cut them bevel, and I'll show you really quickly here. When I cut bevels, uh, you have your part traced out. I always like to put the edge just over the edge because sometimes you cut it on the edge I think you cut too much off so I like to put the straight edge just over the line like that put my blade at the angle like this like that like that see look at that nice clean bevels can't beat it we're gonna go ahead and finish up six five and seven with this technique now our 10 millimeter detail pieces are all cut and beveled. We're gonna move on to our four millimeter detail pieces. You can see right here, this is for the chin. We're gonna go ahead and detail pieces here. We're gonna cut these guys out. Got it. All right, our three millimeter parts are shaping up. Uh, on the chin piece, we need to cut a little bit of a trench on the back. Like that. And I take a knife and cut in a little bit of an angle like this. And there we go. Now our four millimeter detail parts are done. Here's part four, left and right. I cut these out of six millimeter foam. Um, we're gonna do some uh, techniques I did before. Like uh, last time I did the smaller part, I cut a trench in the back. And you can see right here in the, the front, I have these markings. I went ahead and took the markings, went around the back and connected them and traced them. These are gonna be my bevel lines. So I'm gonna wood burn a trench so that we'd be able to bend this. So it has a nice little clean crease. And I have my wood burner, and this is kind of a nice, well, you guys can see here's like a little, this tip right here. There, see that? It's got a little bit of a trench. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that falls centered. So you're going to put the metal edge a little bit offset. There, look at that. Gives a trench and it allows you to bend the foam like that. See how nice and clean it looks? All right, now we have the wood burner hot. We have part 10 right here. These pieces are gonna be two millimeter foam pieces, but these guys right here, little slots, are gonna be in, uh, indentations, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line this up. All right, got that. Then we're gonna move on to part six. Uh, these are set on the side of the helmets, and uh, I wanna put like a little bit, like a groove right in here. Let's swap the bit. This bit's too big. Let's swap that out real quick. Um, I find it's easier just to go ahead and draw something on with the uh, a ballpoint pen I'm trying, instead of trying to wing it just kind of like make a line again it's so great just to draw them out with a ballpoint pen first it gives you something to follow when you're using a wood burner and got it okay now we're finished with our wood burning detail pieces here we're going to move on 25 millimeter dial i got from tnt cosplay supply these are going to be the little um they go on the bottom of the jaw piece and i have a little gauge right here i have my depth right there make my mark now the trick is I want to cut this as square as possible <laughs> with my blade and the straight edge I'm gonna do my best Let's see using my board to cut this nice and square yeah that seems pretty flat that's not bad all right there it is nice all right we have these two now the detail pieces are cut, let's move on to part six. Now we're moving on to part six. This is four millimeter detail pieces and these have been all cut out at 90 degree angles. Now we're gonna move on to our next step. 
Okay, before we start gluing, we're gonna take the stone bit, we're gonna soften some edges. I'm gonna walk you through each one of these. Now, with our stone bit, we're going to round up part four, but again, we're just gonna round the edges, but we're not going to touch these top edges up here on the top piece. These all stay 90. All right, these bits are round. Also, one thing I also want to add, do not round these edges on the ends. These are the square part where they get glued together. So you want to make sure you keep those nice and square as well. Now we're going to move on to part nine. We're going to do some softening the edges, but we're only going to soften the top edge, which is the, um, that's the front here. We're going to bevel. We're going to take the, soften the edge from here just the top from the front here to the angle here to that and leave this 90 and all this 90 keep this all square everything is done has been cut and uh, beveled and rounded we're going to move on to is heat forming or heat shaping as i like to call it we're going to start with the parts one right and left Now the parts have been heat formed. We're gonna to start to glue them together. I'm gonna to start with the side pieces. We're gonna glue two and three together first. All right, that's our right, we're gonna move on to the left. All right, we have our right and our left. We're gonna move on. To All right, this time, line the front up. And again, you can see that both these are, the, the front is beveled. So you know it's the front, touching that front edge. And sometimes you might have to push and pull just a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply glue to our right and left and put these guys together. Here's the tricky part. We're going to do our right and left together. Start with the front. There we go. All right, got it. Um, all right, you can see I turned the light back on. It's all a little blown out. <laughs> uh, again, everybody said, now it's all glued together. You can see it's kind of this weird shape, uh, and I would like it to be more like a helmet oval, like that. But the only way to do that is to heat form it. Uh, but the glue is still fresh, so you want the glue to dry, sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. So we'll let this dry a little bit longer, and then we'll heat shape it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's go ahead and let that dry, and we'll shape it up. Okay, we let the uh, helmet dry. It was about over an hour, so it's ready. So I'm now going to heat form it with my heat board. Now when heating, uh, we're gonna heat this up, but see these guys right here on the side, what we're gonna do is we're going to heat up and press it to where these guys go flat. So it keep, and so we press it and kind of hold it like this, more like an oval shape. And when it cools, it'll hold the shape. Let it cool, now foam cools quickly. Yep, there it goes. Zach, excellent. A little bit of the highlights when we glue things together, there's little bumps and things on the seams. So I'm gonna take this opportunity really quickly, take the stone bit, and I'm just gonna clean, just kind of go over the edges just very lightly. It's this product called Gapville, which I'll tell you right now, unfortunately, it's not on the market yet. It's in development. Uh, it's a it's a gap filler. That's the name gap filler, and I'm going to use it for the recesses. Anything deep in there, we're going to patch, and this is made. And you can be able to get this at TNT Cosplay Supplies. So I'm going to take this guy and just go over the edges. Now this thing is filling in the gaps. Also, it's non-toxic, and when it dries, it remains flexible. 
So yeah, it's that amazing. All right, I find also too, I like to wet my finger a little bit. I have a spray bottle real quick here. To wet my finger and go over it while it's still wet. And it smooths it out a little bit more. I try to minimize sanding as much as possible. All right, you know, we got the gap filler. I'm gonna speed this up with a hairdryer. The gap filler is nice and dry, so just an extra precaution. Since this is all here, I'm gonna go ahead and seal the rest of the foam. Oh, and this is with rapid fill. And this is just overall to get a nice good coat on all the foam. I'm doing two things. I'm, I'm brushing on, but it's also pushing into the pores of the foam. So when you go to sand it, it'll help the foam look really smooth. Okay, everything has now been coated with the rapid fill. Um, I'm gonna put this outside and let this dry. Now we're gonna move on to the little plugs. These go on the bottom of the helmet um, with our TNT foam dowels we cut. Uh, this is the trim, you guys can see on it, it's beveled in and beveled out. So when you wrap it, it overlaps nicer. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this on the bottom edge of this guy right here. Now we're gonna take some contact cement. We're going to apply through our strip. Nice. Make sure to get the beveled edge on the outside like that. And then we apply edges, glue to the bottom edge. All right, the contact cement is dry. Line up on the edge. We keep it nice and flush on the back. Oh, let's see if this is the best part about this. Watch this. Put that down, overlaps. Ah, perfect. I would like to do a little bit of a recess, a hole in the center in my brass tube. Cut it all the way through. Well, just like that. Use a paintbrush. There you go. Take it out. And this time around, I apply contact cement to it. And you put it back in like that. But I don't go all the way back in. I go just a little bit like that. That is a little extra step. Like, great. Now I'm going to take the uh, stone bit. We're going to just uh, clean the edges here and flatten these guys down a little bit. All right, these two are definitely done. Oh, wait. These guys in the back, <clears throat> now they're dry. Just take a sharp knife and cut them off. Now they're done. All right, we're gonna move on to part four. We're gonna go ahead and proceed to glue on the details. We're gonna glue on, so we got five, we have six, and we have seven. So we're gonna start with the top part there, which is, I believe, is part six, a ballpoint pen. And just kind of mark out where it goes. Here, context moves. All right, contact cement is dry. We're gonna start with part six. And you wanna make sure you get as flush as you can on the edges like that. So you got it, and you get it. And part five comes up like this. And you try to get as high as you can, make sure it touches the bottom of that guy. Yeah, I apologize, the light comes off and on because this the I might have to start, next time I do something, I think I'm gonna use a, a darker foam. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our pieces here. This is the, uh, I'm gonna go right here. Uh, when I glue these, I want to keep a little bit of a gap. So we draw this. So guys, come together. Let's go ahead and glue these guys on now. Now right, here's our chin piece. We're gonna go ahead and glue this together. And what we do is we're gonna do this on the bottom. I'm going to do the bottom edge of this. Now, this goes on like that. Like that. Take the stone bit. I'm going to All right, we're now to our helmet. All the stuff is dry. We had our 
gap filler and a rapid fill on top. It's dry. Best way to sand this stuff is using a soft sanding sponge. And I have links for these below the video. This helmet is pretty smooth, good to go. Um, we're going to start adding on our details. On the front of the helmet, there's going to be a little bit of a trim. So I got some um, eight millimeter TNT uh, foam half round, and I'm going to put that right on the edge of the helmet. So now we're going to take this and cut it at a bevel in so it'll fade. So I'll show you really quickly here. Like that. So it has that taper. Start the edge. This. All right, the helmet's sanded, all the details done. We're going to go out and proceed to add our part nine, which sits right here on the outside edge. Let's use a fine tip Sharpie instead. And again, on the square end, put some contact cement on the back end because they're going to make contact. So it feels good. Okay, it's dry. Let's apply it. Line it up. Stay flush with the seams. Keep that look, keep it mechanical. Give it, and you make them touch, contact. Like that, got it, okay. All right, looking good. Um, a little bit of an overhang on this, not too bad, but I'm just gonna clean this up with the stone bit. That the, the front is nice and even. The back looks a little kind of like, a little wonky back here, so again, I'm just gonna heat up this section to even it out a little bit. It's just that easy. <laughs> just even out just a little bit, less wacky. All right, part nine has been glued down, it's been cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and move on to part four. Now, what I've discovered is uh, these and your edge, you're gonna go on the inside edge. Kill this light for a second, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. When you glue them on, make sure it's flush with the inside edge. So we're going to apply contact cement just to the top edge of four. Contact cement is dry. Again, like I said, when you line up, make sure line up just the inside, make it flush with the inside edge. Perfect. See, now it's coming together. So the next step is we're going to glue these guys together. And when you do that, it kind of pulls the whole thing together. While that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply contact cement to our chin piece. <clears throat> All right, it's dry, put them together, line it up. But see, that's where all the, um, normally you would have to heat it, but since I put the creases in there, it kind of naturally falls together, so you don't have to really heat it up. This is the bottom chin piece, number eight. And this goes under here like that. I'm going to keep this nice and square on that. But this edge here, I'm going to round off. While the glue is drying on the chin piece, we're going to move on to part 10, which goes on the back of the helmet. As you can see, some detail needs to be added here. I have um, two millimeter, a little piece right here as well. Uh, two millimeter, we're going to glue those guys down. Right Set this aside. All right, let's glue the chin piece on. Line up first in the center, in the bottom like that. All right, got it. Now that's on there, we can stick these guys on. Now we can see exactly where they need to fall. All right, it's coming together. Let's go ahead and glue the detail back on the part 10. Do that. Do that. Now, this has to sit on the back of the helmet, so we're going to heat this up. So we're going to need a heat board. I have my acrylic dome. We're just going to heat this up and bend it on top of that.
Yeah, there you go. That's good enough. Before we glue on part 10, we have our small detail pieces right here to go on the side. I probably forgot these guys. These are the additional details that go on the ear pieces. Line it up like that. So now, uh, the this piece. So you can see I made some little registration marks to find our center. Lines up on the seam. Going to line that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my fine tip Sharpie and trace it out. All right, the contact cement is dry. Line up on our seam in the back here. All right, looking good. Um, one more thing I want to do is I have um, the eight millimeter trim piece. I'm going to run that uh, on this lip back here on the helmet. It has a back lip. So it starts right here and it comes back. So we're going to go ahead and cut on the tip. I like to do a bevel first. Like that. When it gets glued on, I'm going to cut it right there in the corner like this. Okay, so that. I need, I need two of those, so I'll do both sides. Just on the edge right here. Like that. Like that. Put it on the edge like this. Like that. And then, see it just fades off really nice. Do both sides. You make contact on the bevel right there. When gluing down, I'm just going to bend the the eight millimeter, just bend it like this. See, pull it, nice. Man, I love this stuff. I love the fact that I don't have to make foam trim. I can just buy it. It's so awesome. Thank you, TNT. Now, before we stick this down, I gotta see the um, the bevel here, the cut. I'm gonna lay it on top, see where it falls. Come with my knife on the top like this, cut it. Like that. And therefore, I know exactly it's going to fall right in there, like this. And pow. Look at that. There it is. There is our Cyberpunk Combat Helmet is complete. It's all put together. We have all our pieces glued in. We got the trim, got the detail, the crazy back piece here. Um, our next step is to go ahead. Um, use my spray gun, critter gun, to seal this with creature cast. So we're going to take this to the spray booth and do that. Well, there it is, all sealed and dry <laughs> with the creature cast. Um, again, this I let this dry for a solid day. It's nice and dry. Um, been debating, but looking at the uh, video game characters and stuff, and in my head, in the game, the world, this is all gonna be like poly, I'm not gonna do the uh, chip metal thing technique. This is far, far in the future, so this is like polycarbonate or some kind of like super strong plastic. So I like all this being black for now. I want the top of the helmet to be a gray. So I have some Rust-Oleum 2X. This is the uh, dark gray. But I want to keep this black and I want to keep this part black because I am going to eventually paint these different colors. I don't know what yet, but I definitely want to mask these guys off. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's start with this back piece right here. I realize masking this edge is kind of a pain, especially with masking tape. So I got some thinner blue tape, masking tape, and we're just going to use this to guide this. This will flex a little bit for me. So at least I can focus on the edge. And of course I have this links for this tape below the video. All right, we have the back all masked off. Now we're gonna go ahead and mask off of this area as well. That's it. Okay, now we got the, the most important edges here masked off. Now for pieces like this down here, I've uh, learned a little trick from my friend Jason when I worked at the prop house, because we're always under the gun doing things quickly. A great way to mask things off is using the uh, plastic wrap. All right, this is all masked off, so we're gonna to proceed to paint this all with our uh, Rust-Oleum 2X uh, dark gray. So we're gonna take this to the spray booth.
All right, there it is. Uh, this is the Rust-Oleum 2X Dark Gray. It's dry, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the demasking. Okay, the helmet has been all demasked. This looks fantastic. We're going to move on to some different colors. I'm gonna, I like this part and these two here. Uh, in my brain, I wanna have these like a dark metallic. So we're gonna go proceed to mask off this edge and up here. And uh, so we can paint these guys, both sides. All right, this is, this, is, this is officially masked off. So you can see that this part and this part are just exposed. So we're gonna paint these. Of course, we're gonna have to mask off the rest of the area. But right now we have this side done. So we're gonna move on to the other side. And again, it's it's the Ava, because you don't wanna put so much tape all over your fresh paint. So just do as much plastic wrapping as possible. There we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our dark metallic paint, which you have right here is the Tamaya. This is the Mataya metallic gray. We definitely wanna mask these guys off. Being circles is always difficult, so I find it's best to get a template. Get some tape. All right, now we have the, this is the same diameter as the pieces I wanna paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Then, taking the second blade. There we go. So we do cut this guy right down like this. That's good. Um, make sure it's nice and flush. Been thinking about it. I'm gonna go ahead. I want to paint these guys red, and I realize I want to leave that black. That's a circle, so I'm gonna use the piece of tubing I use to cut the uh, foam, and use that to make a temp, uh, make a tape stencil to drop in there. So let's do that. To drop that in there like that. Hold on. Got it. That's one. Let's do the other side. Again. Now we're just gonna lay on very lightly. There's we've got our white base on there, this looks great. Uh, it's gonna dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the airbrush and prep this for the red. That is dry. Let's slowly and gradually start to demask everything here. Ta-da, look at that. Nice. All right, with the button back here, we're gonna paint this silver. So the next step is I want to do is I want to add some graphics. I have some stickers from previous projects. This is like, a, I think it goes on a side of fire extinguisher prop. Um, I had these around. Uh, there's some uh, dashboard stickers for lamps and there's like some cell phone stickers for numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these guys and place them in things all over the helmet. Yeah, look at that, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, got the graphics on this side, that side, got a guy back here, a couple of guys right here. Now, next up is we're gonna take some black pinstriping tape. That'd be kind of cool. I'm just going to run a line, kind of like back here a little bit. Tell you what, after I thought about it, I like all this. We're gonna break this up. I'm gonna do a line. Let's do a pinstriping tape line that goes right here. Got that, excellent. Now with my airbrush, uh, with some black tamaya, watered down with some uh, alcohol, I'm going to uh, weather down the white 
so with the white's a little bit too bright I'm taking an airbrush very lightly and just all right this one looks great uh everything's done uh the final thing we're going to do this is uh to help seal the paint and also make sure that my um my, my pinstriping stays on uh, and also it's a bit shiny. I'm going to knock it down. I, I like the shine, but just a bit too shiny. So I'm going to knock it down with my um, Krumbacher, um some matte finish. So I'm going to take this to the spray booth and we're just going to matte this down. Moment of truth. Ta-da! <laughs> there it is. My Cyberpunk Combat Helmet. Now again, guys, if I... Uh, you don't have the graphics. You can definitely get decals. And then you can also, I know a lot of people who make their own graphics, we can make stencils, but it's really great just to have stuff that adds a little bit more of that detail to the helmet. Everything I used on this video, this build, is listed just below the video. And if you guys, this is your first time watching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This video is from my live stream I do on twitch.tv slash Smith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And while you're at it, go to my website, eviltetsmith.com. I have patterns. I have Amazon links for shopping for your supplies. And don't forget to check my event page where it shows you where I'll be appearing next. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.